Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, this is Toy from Oasis of Love International Center, um, Wolverhampton. Um, you're welcome to today's symposium. Um, so we have um, a symposium here today. And then, so whether you're joining us from Facebook or you're joining us from Zoom or your YouTube, you're very welcome to our midst. This is brought to you by the Women Wing of Oasis of Love International Center. And um, this is in, in conjunction with the medical team of the church as well. So the title of our symposium is called The Blessedness of Womanhood, Sex and Aging. And um, in our midst today, to take us through this topic, we have someone who is very qualified to do so. And um, he'll be taking us through this topic and we'll be answering as many questions as we are able to take due to time. His name is Dr. Edima Raleigh and he's a doctor, medical doctor, like I rightly said, he's also a consultant in um, obstetrics and gynecology. In addition to that, he's a fellow of both West African College of Surgeon as well as National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria. So permit me to introduce you to for you to see this doctor, his name is um, Dr. Dima. You're welcome, doctor, to our midst. So he's going to be taking us through this topic. So if you still have your question on this our various platform, feel free to share your questions um, on the comment section, and we'll be taking it if time permits us. So um, Dr. Dima, can you please tell us just a little bit about yourself? Thank you to once again, and I'm honored to be here. Thank you to Oasis of Love for this opportunity. Um, well, you've said it all. <laughs> I did my training in Nigeria, basically. I am a consultant of St. Anthony College, just like you mentioned. I'm a fellow of um, West Africa National College of um, Surgeons. Um, I would be going through some important factor as regards womanhood. Mm. And um, after my talk, we can take questions. Yes. But it's important we all have a basic understanding of what is important. Yes. I've tried my best to ensure that I don't talk too many medical terms. I know this is not Please a medical Please keep it simple, <laughs> doctor. <laughs> yes, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'll try, I will try to, okay. to make sure it's simple because yeah. I know this is not a medical class. Yes. Okay, but there are certain things that we need to understand. Okay. And um, I'll be lying if I say, Womanhood is simple. Yes, that's just what I was going to say, doctor. You know, as a human being, we go through different stages of life, yes. both man and woman. Yes. But I just say to you that the woman, anatomy and physiology, is a bit more complicated than that of the man. Absolutely. And, you know, the need for every woman to understand her body and the way the body works and those that loves her, it cannot be overemphasized. So I'm going to say, to, I'm going to ask you, doctor, can you please tell us a bit more about a woman's physiology? Good, okay, thank you so much. I'll do that. Um, but I start explaining the physiology. Before I became a doctor, mm -hmm. I'm first a Christian. And there is this thing about the science Praise world. God. They don't, the science do not actually believe in the concept of Christianity and the mm -hmm. Bible. They believe that we humans are <coughs> product of evolution. Yes. I do not believe that because in itself, <laughs> that's, that's funny. That is funny and yeah. doesn't make complete sense. Yeah. For those of us who are opportune to learn and understand humans and how complex humans are, you cannot just say that this being just come up by chance. Absolutely the not. The only reasonable and, and, and logical Ironically, to those who are scientists who say um, God does not exist is the, the account given in the Bible. Mm. The only logical explanation to we humans is that which was given in the Bible. Wow. So I am going to be making this talk today. I'm going to be taking this talk today based on... Thank you so much. I'm going to be taking this talk today based on the principle of the Bible. Because I am a Christian, that's what I believe. Science world, well, some may say no, they don't believe that, they don't believe Christianity, they don't believe the Bible, that's their belief. So first of all, we need to go back to the Bible
to find out how did the woman come about? What is the beginning? What's the beginning of womanhood? Fantastic. So, we would be discussing this based following this outline. I will be talking about. I will be talking about the 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 beginning. Now, if you look at Genesis, Genesis 2, 22, God said there that it wasn't good for man, Adam, to be alone. Correct. And he was going to create a helpmate. Now, that word, it wasn't good. There were other things there that we humans are not looking at. It was not just about companionship and helpmate. The question I would like to ask you, if God did not create woman, how would Adam make more copies of himself? No he, way. So there was no way. Yeah. So he created the man, but there had to be a way that that man would make more copies of itself. Yes. And that is why women are to come into the picture. Mm. Now, okay. you must understand that God, the last creation of God till date is the woman. After right. God created the woman, he did not create any other thing. Wow. So the woman is the most as advanced creation of God. Yeah. So we men should understand when we deal with women, the kind of um, people we are dealing with. So now what did God do? God took Adam's rib and then he created a woman. Of course, the blueprint for humans was already there, which was Adam. So he needed to make some changes in the woman to, to what? To fulfill the purpose for which it was created. Yes. Now, where, what were these changes? So, these changes, I have this little table that I would use to explain the important ones. There are three basic changes that was made on Adam to form the woman. Okay. One was the appearance. Mm. Now, for the appearance, you would know we men, we don't have breasts. Now, people used to say gynecologists are corrupt people. They say, yes, because we say this because that is what we do. That's our work. So, we, we, we are not shy from mentioning this anatomical structure. So, I'll be mentioning a lot of them as we go. I, we are still Christians. We're still in church, but we need to say them. So, now, the breast was created. So, addition of the breast, and God made it bigger. Yes, man has something small, but because of the purpose of the woman, it had to be bigger. Now, we'll come to the function of the breast in a while. Now, God created more curves. If you look at a man, a man is just straight from straight, head to toe. Yes. But God had to put curves. Why? We will get there in a bit. Now, the other thing that God created was the gonads. If you look at this picture here, you will see the gonad is like the reproductive house. It's, the, it's where we have both the sperm in man being produced and then the ovaries, which is what we call the egg in the female. So now, gonads were already existing in the man. But there were some changes. The gonad was outside in the testes. Because the ovaries was going to become like an incubator, like mm. a reservoir to keep the eggs, mm. it had to be in an environment that is continuously warm. Mm. So he moves the ovaries into the woman, unlike wow. the man that is outside. It the, has to be inside. Yes. So if you look at the, the cord, you see the spermatic cord, it's the same thing with the ovary, with the, with the fallopian tube. It's the same structure but moved in. Now, in addition to that, God created the womb. Now, there is no womb in the man, but God created the womb. And then an outlet, which is the vagina. The man doesn't have a vagina because it's not going to, it's, there's nothing that's coming out. But the product of conception given to the woman at some point needs to come out, which is the baby. Yes. So there must be an opening connecting both the outside world to the womb. Mm. So that was why he did that. Now, again, he made some other changes. Now, this is very important now. Hormones. Hormones. Now, if you look at the man, to make it simple, testosterone is the hormone in the man that makes us go in. But for the female, he added two others, estrogen and progesterone. Now, these hormones are extremely important. They come from the ovary. We'll come to discuss them more in a bit. But in order to save time, let's move on. Now, these hormones, are from when a woman becomes, gets to puberty, mm -hmm. in fact, without this hormone, pubertal changes cannot occur. So it was, it was, it is this hormones that is secreted that kicks off puberty, kicks off the development of the breast in a young girl. She begins to have um, um, the, the backside becoming bigger and the rest. So now, 
the third thing that was done was the mental state. Now, women are actually more alert than men, arguably. Okay. But I'm going to give you some points to still tell you that that is what the, the, the actual picture That's is. That's interesting to know. Intelligence. Let me say this. I know the men are watching. And we need to, to know what we are dealing with. As a matter of fact, arguably, women are more intelligent than men. I am saying arguably because I know men will want to argue it. But I'll give you some certain facts. Now, in terms of efficiency, women are far more efficient than men. Now, I wrote their pack cell volume. It is the amount of blood in a person. Normally, for man, it's 40. For females, let's say around 30, 38. Around 38. Now, a woman can lose a blood volume and, and drop down to a PCV of 10 and still function. Men can't go that low, they are gone. Wow, God is so wonderful. Yes, yes. Women are so different. Yes, and the reason is this, because God knows that during childbirth, they may be bleeding. Wow. And so he, he accommodates that, okay, if the woman still bleeds, she won't just die immediately. He will give her some time to, 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 to care for her. Wait, yeah. And so that is why. So when you have a car, for example, and you have to improve on that car, you will not create the same car. Now, like a, a Lexus of, a, of 2000 and um, let's say of 2000, it's not the same with a Lexus of 2022. So the way God actually improved on us to create the woman the in woman. all aspects. Oh, now, let's, let's take some quick Bible discussion. We're well, not discussion, but stories that will tell you how, how intelligent women are. Oh. Now, if you look at the story of Adam and Eve, the law was given to Adam. Yeah. But when, the, when Satan wanted to cause sin, he didn't go to Adam. Because he knows that Adam is unlikely to, to fall, to agree. He went to Eve. Why? Okay. Because he knows, he knows that if I can get Eve to do what I want, Adam would definitely, oh, definitely fall. Oh my God. Because he understands that women know how to get what to they want man. and how to manipulate a man. Woman, I hope you're listening to that. Interesting. I hope men too are listening. <laughs> Interestingly, after marriage, it takes a woman an average of three months to figure out the man, the totality of the man. What he likes, what he doesn't like, how to appreciate, what to get from her. But unfortunately, all through our lives, we men, we don't understand our wives. Well, we keep saying, arguably, um, doctor. Arguably. Yeah. But we keep saying, <laughs> what we keep saying is that I don't just understand this woman. I don't just understand this woman. But if you, let me give you another analogy. If a woman is serving you food and it gives you four wraps of fufu or eba or any swallow and you ate two and wasted two or you didn't eat two, the next time she's going to serve you, she will give you two and keep the many two in the kitchen and tell you that if, that's, if you can finish those, I'll bring the rest. <laughs> but if it's a man, she will continue to give you the four. <laughs> So, because if they have this ability to quickly adjust, and the reason we are going to get there. So now, when Eve ate the fruit, when he ate the fruit, how did Adam get it? We just heard in the Bible that he took the fruit to Adam, and Adam ate. He, she knows what and what to tell, tell a man, the man to get it. Now, men, let me tell you this. Whenever a woman comes to you, to say that, hey, I'm just thinking our kids to go to school A. Or I'm just thinking, she's not just thinking actually. She has been thinking for the past two to three months. And she has been thinking of the best way to sell that information to the you. Man. So, for women, men that usually feel that um, the, the, the woman they have or, or, or that women are not intelligent are the ones who fall prey the most. If you understand who you are dealing with, if you understand the fact that you are equally dealing with people that are of very high intelligence, you will know how to deal with women. In fact, when my wife comes to tell me something or discuss an issue with me, even if I'm watching my favorite club play, I will pause that game or I would, I would, I would up that TV and listen. Because that she, is called wisdom. Yes. Now, the reason she's coming to tell me that information at that time because she knows that at that time, my guards are down, and I'm least likely to listen. 
I'm least likely to approve of whatever it is she's going to tell me. Yeah. Then tomorrow, she will not come and say, yeah, so our kids are going to school A. You say, why are they going to school A? <laughs> no, we agreed. When did we agree? When did we agree? When, when we were said, watching football. When you said, we well, they cook. I don't. So we may we say we don't know when these decisions have been made, but they know where to ask us to reduce <laughs> our, our attention and to get what they want. Hmm. So, so I, if you also look at the Bible, so I'm coming, I'll go back to this. I just want to show you something. In my next slide, there is um, a point I, I put there. Okay, so largely, in terms of loyalty, hmm. women are more loyal than men. I agree to that absolutely. Sir. Now, now, if you if you doubt it, there is this story. A, a woman can actually give a life for a man. Mm. Once a woman see that, um, once a woman believe that you have an interest at art, she can do anything. Now, men don't understand. The, how to get the loyalty of a woman. When, when you get married to a woman, it doesn't mean that she's loyal to you. At marriage, you married for love. Now, a loyalty you would earn. Now, how do you, how, um, how do you earn a loyalty? You earn a woman's and unfortunately, you only have most of the time one chance at it. You earn a woman's loyalty by showing to her that you have an interest at heart. Absolutely, I agree that, that. The, that everything you do is for us, for the woman herself, and yes. for the kids. Yes. Now, once you can show that of everything, she comes first. Yes, she, she, matters, more. she matters more than any other thing. She's number one. She's, number one. She's, priority. She's priority. Then she becomes loyal to you. You're right. Now, you can never exhaust the benefits of a good woman till you die. Exactly. Once she's able she's, to accept Yes, once she's loyal to you. Yeah. Now, the converse is also the case. Mm. If a woman believes you are not loyal to her, or if a woman is not loyal to you, you cannot live above a certain level. Mm. Now, if a woman wants you dead, you don't need to ask if you're going to die. It's when you're going to die. <laughs> because if a woman gets to a point where she says, Oh, because you have done this, I will. Whatever she says, she's going to do it. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me take you to some, some stories in the Bible. If you remember the story of um, Jacob and Esau, it was, yes, we know that Jacob got the blessing. How did he get the blessing? It was the mother. Yes. She skinned it all. She was the one who listened to, the, to, to, to Isaac, yeah, to giving him. instruction yes. to Esau. Yes. She was the one who said, look, that, that man they call Esau had gone to the forest yeah. to look for animal. There's yeah. one animal behind our door here. Yeah. Yeah. Go and take that goat and bring it to me. And she was the one who prepared the, I will prepare the food the way your father loves it. Yeah. And then yeah. even when Jacob said, look, what if my father catches me trying to deceive him? And say, let, the, let your cause be upon me. Yes. Do as I have said. Because the Bible recorded that the father actually preferred Esau. Because yes. Esau was giving him to, and the mother preferred Jacob. So who got the blessing? Jacob. Jacob. Mm -hmm. Even though it was the man that was to give us the blessing, it was the person who the female liked Lights. that got to the skin. To yes. Now, finally, let's talk of Jesus and Mary. The first miracle done by Jesus was impromptu. Yes. It was, it was not his time. Yes. How did he do the miracle? He was just having fun at the party. Yes. <laughs> How did the miracle come about? It was the mother, <laughs> mother Mary. Yeah. Now, they said... Wine has finished. She took the servant to Jesus and told Jesus that uh, there's no wine. Is Jesus Christ a pan wine tapper? <laughs> or does he own an industry of where they produce, produce wine? But he knows what yeah. he could do. Yeah. And when Jesus even told her, I said, look, woman, you know my time has not yet come. come. She didn't say, oh, sorry, I'll leave you. She left the servant. Said, do whatever he asked you says. to do. So they were looking at him. So he had no choice than to say, okay, perform that miracle. So if Okay, so now, why these changes made by God? The first thing is, 
This whole thing was calculated by God because of procreation. God wants us to produce our kind. Yes. And that is the role of the woman, like I explained. So first of all, the woman has to be able to attract the man to come and meet. Because if you leave both man and woman in the garden, the man will keep going on his own. He will not even look at the woman. Mm -hmm. So those calls I said earlier was to love men to the woman. Okay. The reason why God had put the breast, have you ever wondered, why is the breast in front? If it was in the armpit, babies would still suck it there. Yes. In fact, other animals have their breasts down here. Yes. This all was to calculate, is a calculation by God to lure men to their wives or the to women. Awesome for the God. purpose of procreation. Awesome so if God. you look at a woman from front, you will see something. Mm. If you look at the back, you will you see, something. see something. If you look from the side, you will see bo if even better, you will see both at once. Yes. And so for us men, we are moved by sight. Mm. It is not a pro it's not a, a an issue of um, we have bad character. We were created that way. So look to at to look woman. and behold a woman. And that is why females on the other aspect also know that their physical appearance matters. Mm. If you look at a woman, she wants to be clean, she wants to be fine, she wants, to, she wants us to see her and, and, and love her. So God did that because of procreation. The second point you need to realize is that the woman is to conceive. Mm. So, the, so the womb that was added and the ovaries and the way the, 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 the changes was to ensure conception. Wow. Again, to, when you get pregnant, you have to keep the pregnancy. God created mechanism for the woman to feed the baby. After pregnancy, you have to deliver. Mm. So all this were done to make sure that a woman gets the baby, keep the baby and deliver. And after deliverance, now the point of our intellectual, I, our intelligence and, and being at a lot, a woman has to take care of her baby. Imagine the, the, the mother hen with, with the chicks. She needs to know quickly if a hawk or an eagle is coming to pick the baby yes. so that they can go into hiding before the, the danger comes close. Yeah. Imagine if she cannot see it from afar. Mm. So a mother would be able to tell a child, oh, look, these things are dangerous. That is the reason why women generally have that alertness. Mm. A woman can multitask. We yes. men, we can only learn it. It doesn't come naturally, but for a woman, it comes naturally. It does, if yeah. you take five boys and five girls around the block of an area, and then come back and ask them what the names of the streets are. The girls are likely to tell you the, some of the names more than the boys. Yeah. Because females are generally more observant than men. Arguably. Yeah. Arguably. <laughs> now, yeah. so, so now, so to, to, to the reason why this whole thing is for procreation. Now, the women have another important role. To select the kind of gene that is being reproduced. As a matter of fact, we men generally, we cannot say men are beautiful. If you are just beneath, wear, wear, wear good clothes and beneath. What then makes a woman fall in love with you is some good qualities. First of all, maybe the way you walk, the way you speak, your, your intelligence. This is a way for them to select. So a woman is the only being that determines what goes into her. So she has a selection mechanism. She listens to you. She looks at you. She finds some things good in you that she wants her child to have. She allows you. Okay. Men don't have I'm that I'm just going to hold you on there, Dr. Edema. If you're just joining us, you're welcome to Oasis of Love International Center. Um, so we're talking about the womanhood, sex, and aging. If you have any question on any of our platform, please keep them, just keep writing them down. Um, we hope to have time to take them. If we cannot take everything all, maybe we'd have to sort out another program another day. Thank you very much. Yes, Dr. Edema. Yes, thank becoming you. becoming more interesting now. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and so I was explaining the role of a woman in terms of selecting the kind of gene you reproduce. So this is still being done till today. Mm. If you go to the animal kingdom, during mating season, all the male animals will fight. And the winner will be the one to impregnate all the females. Why? All the females. Yes, wow. all. The stronger ones. Why? Because the weak ones who lost must, they cannot be, their gene cannot be transferred. So no female will want to go to the ones that have, that have been beaten, but they all prefer to go to the strong male. Oh. That's where they are, they, are, they are picking, they are selecting the genes to transfer. However, though, these days, for, the, for we humans, it is not the case anymore. 
because of the financial situation of the, of, of, of the country and the world. <laughs> Females okay. now consider money more now. Than it's now if you have the money, you are allowed in. Mm. And you are take, all like the, the jettison where you talk well, you have good qualities. It doesn't help anybody now. Yeah. What help people now is how much your pocket and, and how much money you have. Yes. Otherwise, it was not meant to be that way. Yeah. The animals still do that till today. Mm. Okay, so now let's now go to quickly to. I'm going to be very quick with this. Now, the ovulation period, now a woman's cycle, an average of 28 days, we know it is between 21 to 35, okay. but let's say an average of 28, 28 days. days. 14 days of that cycle is when she ovulates. Now, the egg will be out, released. Ovulation means releasing of the egg. Okay. Now, the egg will be released and will be out there for just two days. Oh. A day to two days. Now, that is the only time a woman can get pregnant. Wow. Which means any sex, sexual intercourse, prior to this time and after this time, you are just playing. Really? That is all, the only time that she's fertile to, to if she gets sperm, at, if, if she misses her husband and, and he releases viable sperm, she's going to get pregnant. Within just two days Within in a month? Within just two days. So, wow. when, we, when we go to infertility clinic, we'll try to find out what a cycle is, I will tell them these are the days of your cycle that you must be with your husband for if you are really looking to get a baby. Okay, so the importance of this, this is the way God has created it. And around that ovulation period, there is secretion of what we call androgen. You know, male, we, are, we have androgen in SS, testosterone. I'll tell you why in a bit. But for women, that is when androgen level increases. And that is, that is when a woman is more receptive. That is when a woman wants to have sex. God did it that during way. that two during days. During that two days. Oh. God created such a way that the energy level will go up. She enjoys sex more. She wants to. That is why, that is why you see, a, a, most men don't know that sometimes in the month, most of the time, most, most time in the month, they are the ones going to meet their wives, trying to catch you up. But at a specific time, she comes to meet you herself. Mm. Most of the time, it is when she is actually ovulating. Mm. Now, for men, we are always ready. And I'll tell you why that is. So, but this is just important for now. Let's move on. So, anything before and after these two days, you're not going to get pregnant. No. Doctor, can I ask, is it possible that a woman is, um, wants sex, or is it possible you are ovulating during your period? Well, it's very unlikely. People have said that. People have said them they, they have the urge during that time. But why you, why you, you ovulate after some events, okay. which includes your menses, and it is usually 14 days after your menses from the first day, mm -hmm. really. So, ovulating while you're menstruating is not likely. That blood is not menstruation. Menstruation, as, on, on it, as, it's, as it is, is usually um, um, 14 days before ovulation okay. in a 28-day cycle. Okay, so, but let me quickly just finish. I will take all the questions together. Yes, okay, so, so, the next thing we need to know, why why is, why is it that females have run this circle and the males themselves don't have a circle? This is the reason. Imagine if the males also have a circle and they are running the same pattern. Let's, and then a, a man meets a woman who, she, who they, don't know, they don't know themselves before. They just meet and get married. Mm. And the woman is fertile on week one. Mm. And the man is fertile on week three. What happens? They can't procreate. No, they can't. They cannot procreate. And the reason why... Thank you so much. Yeah. They cannot procreate. So God did it in such a way that while one, which is a female now, is running a, huge, a normal monthly circle, the other person is ever ready for whenever that woman it's is ready. fatal. That is why any woman on earth can marry any man. And they will still procreate. So if men were running circle, that means you have to be looking, please, what's your model? Are you, are you week one? What? Because I'm week one. Or, I'm, yeah. Yeah. And God doesn't want that. It's too complicated. Yes, yeah. it will be too complicated. So now, if you now go to the, the, the male, so as a result, the male has to be ever ready for the woman. Two things. He must be ever ready to mate. I mean, he must always be in the mood to mate. You must always be in the mood to me. That's ever ready. Okay. Then, two, you must always have what to give, which is sperm. So, spermatogenesis, production of sperm, is a continuous thing in men. 
Yeah. Because it takes three, three months. When, when they produce when they produce one now, it takes three months, the body will absorb that. So the body continues to produce pan because it's expected. You may be called upon at any time to come and fertilize the egg that has been released. Okay. <laughs> okay. And you know that in, in, in addition to the sperm is producing, you must also have the desire for sex. Yeah. And that is why we advise women. You see, don't say that a man likes sex too much. It was built to be that way for purpose of procreation. So as much as you can, mostly when they are both young, they can match one another. Women, I hope you are listening. So, so to say Don't to complain. a man, to say to a man that uh, go away, is it every day? Is built to be that way, mm. really, in the real sense of it. And that is why, although that's not the topic of today, if you look at what has been happened before, our fathers have several wives. Mm. Why? Because if number one is not uh, receptive, I will go to number two. Mm. You know, so so for for this day we have seen that it's not good. We know we don't encourage people to have more than one wife. It's, it's troublesome. So we, we 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 have to encourage the men, talk to them to let them understand that this is physiologic, but you can control it. Okay. okay, you can control it and make sure you don't give yourself problems. Yes. So now then, because a woman will no longer be loyal to you if she catches you doing that. Okay. So so now I have explained this. So let's now focus on the last um, part of it. So sex. Now, if you look at the Bible, the sole purpose of sex is procreation and nothing more. Go and multiply. Now, the pleasure of sex is an incentive put there by God to allow us to do it. It is for procreation. That is why for the woman, it's during when the egg is out, you, you see androgen going up for her to want to have it. Human beings, me and you, we are one of the only animals who have learned to enjoy the pleasure of sex without procreating. Mm. We have developed contraception and all the rest to continue enjoying ourselves. We are using it now as a means of relaxing, enjoying, and not procreation. But actually, the actual purpose was for us to procreate. Okay. So now, uh, people have continued to say that why, as a woman, as I grow older, my sex drive decreases? That is the next thing we're going to explain, and that will be the conclusion of, of, of the matter. Now, why do sex drive de decrease? The ovary, the ovary of a woman, from the day she was born, contains all the eggs you will need throughout her lifetime. Oh. Yes. No new egg is produced. No new egg is produced during the lifetime of a woman. So the ovary itself is actually a reservoir. It's like a freezer to preserve egg. Yeah. Unlike man, that the gonads are is a machine, is producing, producing spam every, every time. time. The woman's own is you a woman is born with millions of eggs, mm. but they are all going to be preserved. So every month, 15 to 20 of those eggs are, 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 are co-opt. They mm. co-opt them and start not showing them. One of them will become the dominant egg after 15, which will be released. The other 15 will be thrown away. Next month, the other they will do the same circle. So when these eggs have been there since birth. As the woman go older, the ovaries are no, it's no longer able to perform this function. The eggs are not like the way they were. So as the woman grows older, the function of the ovaries decreases. Jesus. These eggs produce some of these hormones when they are maturing. The estrogen produced what I spoke of earlier is produced by these eggs. So as the number and the quality begins to reduce, so also is the hormones that they produce begin to reduce. Mm. Androgen begin to reduce in quantity, desire and uh, and libido for sex begin to reduce. Wow! So the reproductive age group is taken as from 18 to 35. As a woman goes above 35, go into get to 40, get to menopause, you see that all these things begin to reverse. And once start reversing, she doesn't she she, she is not um, as receptive as before. Now, the next thing is estrogen helps the vagina to become to be lubricated and to, to, to be in a, in, in, a, in, a, in a good state. But once it's reduced, the vagina lubrication becomes reduced, so mm. the vagina is dry. Mm. The vagina is shrinkled in size. It's not like it used to be. Making sex more painful, painful. as they go up that ladder. Okay. And lastly, the desire for rates is reduced. Unlike the man, mm. Whose gonads do not shut down until it gets to even se a 70 year old man can impregnate a woman. Yes. Even so more, the, even more. Even more. So the odd is still there. So now at this stage, there is disharmony. 
The man is saying, what's happening? I want to still do money saying I'm tired, I'm sick. I'm, of course, you know all the excuses. <laughs> it's not, she's not really sick. She's not she's really tired. Because that woman wake me up in the morning. Wake me in the morning. Mm. Now, all those excuses, if you ask a woman, you say, look, come now, you're my wife. You say, I'm tired, I want to rest. I've been this, I've been that. But that's a woman that cannot give you 10, 15 minutes for sex. We go and do prayer <laughs> for one hour. We go and do, we, we read Bible, we do other things. I will be in the kitchen all day. Yes, <laughs> I will be in the kitchen all day. And if that's a woman as a child who is crying, or as, she will jump up and do everything that child needs. The tiredness is only restricted to sex. May God help yes. us. And the reason is, this physiology is changing. Mm -hmm. She is not like before. So the husband needs to understand, if you have a wife that has gotten to that, to that um age bracket, you need to understand. Like what age group are we looking at on this, this time around? Okay, so we are looking, we are looking at from 40. Hmm. From 40. 35 to 40 is still at the end of the day. So the, the, the real, the real um, um, firehouse, the, the real time for, for when a woman is highly, when it is the reproductive age group, Yes, it's reproductive age group, which is 18 to like 30, 35. Oh, it's, 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 it's all rosy. She, she has no problem. Even though she's not ovulating, if you go to her, she would respond. But as you grow older, the case is not the same. Mm. And men need to understand. So what are the other changes of menopause? Quickly, before I just go. So loss of memory, moon swings, irritability, for, um, forgetfulness, uh, forgetfulness, and uh, motor, uh, motor changes, hot flushes, all those are changes. Mm -hmm. So, so what is menopause? You haven't said anything. Okay, so menopause is when the, the, the to straight, to make it short, when the ovary stop working. Okay. Now, but by definition, it is 12 months of cessation of menses continuously. So if a woman has not seen a period for one full year, and she is in the age bracket of menopause, which is between 45 to 55, average of 52. And, okay. she, and that woman I've not seen her message for one year. She is menopausal. She has attained menopause. But before that time, because it's not going to be once, the ovaries function will continually, gradually decrease. Mm. So you see what we call premenopausal period. Premenopausal period is the changes will start occurring. Her message will become irregular. She will skip a month, see it again. The blood will either be too scanty or be too... So all those changes will occur until... 12 months of cessation, then you cannot say she has attained menopause. In addition to some of these symptoms, um, memory loss, swing, and all that. So, men, if you're watching, if your wife is in this menopausal range, let's say for 40 years, and you begin to notice that she's more irritable, some of it's actually physiologic. And you need to understand that. And you need, to, you need to be more sensitive to it. And that is why we are having this talk, actually. Or you begin to see that she is not, like, she's not wanting to have sex like before. So quickly, what do we do? Employing lubricants can help in this. Because we can't say, uh, because you are going to, you are 40 now, or 42 now, or 45, you don't have sex. Your husband will not listen to that. Mm -hmm. So you could, first of all, before you start applying for play, I know this is not about sex. We are still going to have another talk where we we'll sure. discuss about sex. sex. So, but using oil, water-based lubricant, I didn't say oil-based. They are different. If you want to get a lubricant, water-based lubricant that will not give infection to anybody, it can, can help you. Then the woman too can seek help. There is um, postmenopausal treatment where we give you some estrogen cream that you can rub on the vagina, even on your body that could help you, or on, mostly, mostly on the vagina, that could help you get some hormones that you need to make the place back to or close to what it was before. Was, yeah. And then there are other drugs too that can be given mm -hmm. that, um, that will replace some of those hormones that have been that has reduced because the ovaries is no longer working. Yeah. So I think I have to stop here mm -hmm. and take a few questions. I've, I've gone above the time I'm supposed <laughs> to, but I, I believe, I don't know if I've been able to um, give a background to what womanhood is yeah. and, how, how, and how it is. It, it, to be honest, to Doctor, you have just you know, open my eyes to, you know, you've been able to connect the way a woman is made in the Bible and the way a woman is physically. You've just married them nicely. And, you know, okay. I've, my eyes personally, I have been, you know, been able to see it from a different perspective. You know, 
talking about the stories of um, Jesus and Mary, uh, and um, and his mom talking about um, um, talking about Joseph and Esau talking about Eve and Adam is really um, you know mind blowing talking about it. I've got some few questions here for you. Okay. I hope you'll be able to answer them. I'll be. I'll, I'll, I'll try my best. <laughs> I hope you. So the first question I've got here is. Are there complications if I remove my womb? So okay. that is being asked by one of the listeners. Okay, okay. Well, now there are several reasons why you want to remove your womb. That is not included in the question. But now, complications, yes, they they can be complications. Which what are these complications? Complications attributed to surgery. Any surgery is at risk of having complications. Mm. So what are these complications? It could be Damage of surrounding structures. Say the surgeon is trying to get the womb and then the bladder in front of the womb is damaged. Mm. Or damaged of um, arteries and veins and nerves and the rest, mm. which is attributed to any surgery you are doing. But I believe the, uh, the person asking this question is referring to an old belief. When they say, if you take out your womb, you will not be normal anymore. Okay. I'm, I'm, because we've, we've had these questions before, before. in clinic, mm -hmm. saying uh, um, a woman needs to take up her womb. We are counseling now. That's the best method of treatment. She tells you that uh, if I take up my womb, I will not be a woman anymore. I will, not be, I will not be normal. This and that. No. If the surgery goes on well and no surgical complication at that time, uh, you are still going to be who you are. Now, another complication that we used to see is vault prolapse. It's actually, well, not so, well if you like to say it's common, depending on how the surgery is done. Vault is the roof of the, of the vagina, where, the, where you are, because the entrance to the womb comes into the roof. So if you take off the, the, the womb, you have, to, you have to close and anchor that part properly. So it can prolapse and fall down. You begin to feel something coming down. Your vagina, if that is not anchored well. well. So it's called um, vault prolapse. Mm. That again is a complication. But all these are related to how the surgery was done and who and, and, and what's the experts who did the surgery. If it is done properly, you are not likely to have these complications. Okay, so the, um, you're listening to the um, answer to this question. So if you are the one that asked that question, I hope that answers your question. So basically, there, re there shouldn't be any problem removing your womb for whatever reason why you, want, you might want to do that. But there might be surgical complications, which depends on how the surgery is taken. I hope that clarifies that for you. I've got another question for you, Dr. Edema. And the second question is, why can't my husband go through the surgery? Why me? Although these questions, I really don't understand what I, surgery I, she's talking about. I understand about. the surgery she's okay. talking about. Okay. The surgery she's talking about is... Um, um, ligation of the of the fallopian tubes. Okay, he's talking about um, tubal ligation, where you it's a form of, as a form of contraception. A woman and her husband have decided that they don't want more kids, and so they want to tie the womb. They want to tie the tubes, which is what is done previously. Yeah. So now he's asking, why should I be the one why who should go through surgery and tie my tubes? Why can't the man tie his sperm spermatic cord <laughs> and prevent sperm from coming in anyway? <laughs> Yes, really, really, that is what the world is moving into now. Mm. Because tying of the, of the spermatic cord, which is called vasectomy, is even easier and quicker than tying the, 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 the tubes. So we are encouraging men to also look into it. If, although in Africa, mm. you know, so we... African men. Yes, and, 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 and the way it's perceived... Um, People begin to put some cultural things, but to, to, to take that away and answer the question straight, you, you, it mustn't be you. you. You can discuss with your husband, and he too can do vasectomy, okay. and then they leave your tubes alone. Okay. Uh, yeah, so All right, because, it mustn't be the woman, really. Because, you know, there's a saying that's going around that the main problem when it comes to having many children is actually the man, because it's the man that produces so much sperm and, you know, <laughs> I mean, a woman can only get pregnant once in nine months. Yes. You know, so but for a man, one. you can impregnate so many women, millions of women in nine months. Yes. So whoever mm -hmm. that is, so it is the, it should actually be on the man to do contraception rather than the woman. Because the man is perceived to be the one that is high risk. It's, it's perceived to be someone that is likely to have more children. Is the one that is promiscuous. <laughs> yes. Well, not promiscuous, but 
you know, the what fact that he's able sex? to impregnate as many women as he likes in a certain amount of time, whereby a woman can only preg get pregnant in nine months. once in nine months. And a one man can impregnate millions of women in nine months. Yes, that's so, true. Yeah. So my sister... The, 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 the reason why contraceptives have been formed for, for men is because um, people see reproduction and the role of um, procreation to be more weighted on the woman. Yes. And so the, the earlier contraceptions that came, uh, taking of drugs and all that, were actually made for the woman. But as knowledge begins to increase, men are now beginning, they are now beginning to produce contraception for men too. And yes, so as time goes on, it may get to a point where we will see men doing it. Okay. Thank you very much, doctor. Um, so my sister, um, that question I hope has been answered. It's a question of you discussing with your husband and um, having a decision of who should go first. So it doesn't have to be you, it could be the man as well. The man also have a way of um, you know, controlling, um, quite, um, to control birth as well. So another question I've got here for a doctor is, can I get pregnant at age 44? What are the implications? Okay, so yes, you can get pregnant at age 44. However, the complications of a woman who is at that age and getting pregnant is higher. Yeah. Hypertensive disease in pregnancy is one complication that is more as a woman goes older. Diabetes in pregnancy is another condition that is higher as a woman goes older. Yeah. The risk of having congenital malformed babies is higher as the woman goes older. Because don't forget that that ovary, that, that egg that is going to be used for the baby has been there since conception, mm. since, since, since the woman was born, rather. Mm. And so it's an egg that has probably might have reduced, that might have lost some of the... It's not as it should have been. The quality, strong, yes, yeah. the quality would have been reduced. Mm. So, but yes, you can get pregnant, you can have normal babies at 40. But... If you are married and you are 40 years or 44 years, like this person said, and you are not yet pregnant, it's advisable you seek help quickly. You need to see your gynecologist who will discuss other options with you, including IVF. Mm. The earlier you begin to have that discussion as at 44 years, the better for you. Mm. Okay, so yes, you can get pregnant. Likely, you this read you. After all, how old was Sarah in the Bible when he got pregnant? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So, but but in modern days, in if we're going to put science to it, it's 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 more difficult, but it's possible. Oh, Seventy something when Sarah yeah. was pregnant. Yeah. So, um, so I mean, like the doctor said, it is um, if you can avoid getting pregnant at forty-four, please do. But if for whatever reason, maybe you remarried. Mm or you've never had a baby before, or whatever reason that you feel you want to get pregnant, if at 44 you're still looking to get pregnant, talk to your gynecologist and see what options you have left, um, you know, for you to have a safe delivery. So another question is, why is our sex, life, which you're, you've probably touched on it, okay, why is our sex life so boring now that we're in our early 40s compared to when we're in our 20s and 30s? Yes. Because obviously... The woman's body is it's changing. It's changing, and the man needs to understand the fact that it's changing, yes. and they need to bear with us. Even though they are still, their libido is still very high, mm. but they need to understand that the woman's body is changing. Although to add to that, for mm. men too, it reduces the way the way the way um, I was when I was younger. It's not the way I am now, but you cannot compare that difference. When you look at that of the woman, woman. It's, 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 it's worse okay. in terms of the... But yes, yeah, so the sex life, as you grow older, the age changes and the changes in the ovaries would affect it. And in the end, there would be reduction in libido, reduction in all those hormones, reduction in dryness of the vagina, um, um, shrinking of the vagina, and not as you grow older, as you get as you approach menopause, which will make sex more difficult. Yes, and that might be the reason why sex life is not the way it should be or the way it used to be. Okay. So I have one last question here for now, and that is, what if a woman's menstruation becomes irregular as a result of pregnancy control medication 
would you still say you are premenopausal? So what if a woman's menstruation becomes irregular as a result of pregnancy control medication? Okay. So first of all, in terms of classifying a woman as um, premenopausal, menopausal age, what is the age of the woman we are talking about? If this woman is within the age bracket of above 45, mm. you know, and yes, she is taking contraception. It will be difficult to be able to separate, really, at that stage. Is it the contraception that is, that is causing the regular uh, messes, or she's actually approaching menopause, menopause. and it's premenopausal? So, yes, yeah, so we cannot, we cannot really say at that stage if it is premenopausal or contraception. However, there will be other changes anyway. The better changes in terms of um, um, other other symptoms that I have discussed that would point to where whether it is premenopausal or contraception, but you still need to see your doctor to be able to say, to be able to differentiate it if this irregular, if this irregularity in menses is as a result of the contraception you are taking, and or or is premenopausal. Again, it depends on the type of contraception you are taking. For example, I, I believe was going to mention yes, that I so. believe I believe this person is talking about or I want to believe this person is talking about the hormonal contraceptions, like the pills, the, the OC, COC, oral combined oral contraceptives or POP or or the injectables yeah. or even the implants, they are all hormonal. Yeah. So I believe this person is trying to say that um, um, maybe that is the kind of contraception she's talking about. But something else, how are you just taking it? How has it been? If you have been on a particular contraception and you are not having menstrual irregularities, you're not approached 45, and you begin to see menstrual irregularities, you cannot see at that time that it's, 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 it's the, the contraception. It's contraception yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you don't have those symptoms before, you, start, you just started taking those contraception and then you're having irregularities, yes, you cannot relate it to, to the contraception. So it depends on the scenario for us to see. So, but... Perimenopausal is a definitive concept. And the concept is women, as they approach menopause, changes used to occur. And one of those changes is irregular menses. Okay, so for every particular individual having irregular menses, to know whether or not it is perimenopausal or contraception, you need to see your doctor. That will take some history from you and decide what it is in your case. Wow. For me, this is an eye-opener, um, and, um, you know, I hope that you have enjoyed the program. I hope that we have been able to do justice to the questions that you have asked. But for me, um, Dr. Edema, for a woman that is on contraceptives, what advice do you give someone to think about before knowing what contraceptives to go for? Okay. So because in this country now, we have... Different, and we only we also have children. Well, I will not say children, but in this country, your child can go to a GP to ask for contraceptions, and they will give them. It would be nice to know what what to think about, or what are the things to put into consideration to know the kind of. Because most of the time, you go to your GP, they just say, "Oh, take this." But it's good to know or to have an information what to think about, what to do or what kind of contraceptives to go for? Okay, so I'm going to answer that question by trying to give some light, share some light on contraceptives generally. The, the, the type of contraception depends on the individual person, depends on the patient, depends on the woman, and what best suits a purpose. Now, the purpose for which a woman is coming for contraception is diverse. Some women want to completely end childbearing. Mm. Some women do not want that. They are not just ready for now. They are inter planning on getting pregnant in the nearest future. Some women have medical condition that means that they should not get pregnant until those conditions are addressed. All this group of women would be given contraception, but you cannot give them the same contraception. 
depending on the particular. Some women, for example, a woman that has huge fibroids in her womb and in the endometrium, making it distorted, will not have the same contraception with somebody who does not. For example, that woman cannot. You cannot give the woman coil. Or any kind of coida, copati, or marina, or any kind of cord, because the uterine cavity is distorted. It's going to cause more bleeding. I don't know if you understand me. Understand so, so the medical condition of the woman, the age of the woman, the reason the woman wants to do the, have the contraception, and our own preference will come into play to determine which contraceptive to give. Now, I will just give a general overview of contraception. Now, there are the contraceptives we call hormonal contraceptions. These are contraceptives that contain largely estrogen and progesterone. Those same two hormones we talked about. Yeah. In the dose that would prevent the ovaries from, from functioning, from, from, producing, from, from producing eggs. Not, not, not functioning. The ovary will still function. That's not the right one to use. But to prevent the ovaries from releasing eggs. So if a woman can be on it. They will still menstruate, but they will not ovulate. And this Hormones have come in different forms. COC is combined oral contraceptives, as both as, uh, progesterone and estrogen. POP is progesterone only contraceptive, have only progesterone. And then there are implants where you put in your arm, uh, just you, it depends on the type. Yeah. Some can last three years, some five years. You just put the implant and then you forget about, 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 about childbearing. There are injectables contraceptive, which largely are progesterone based. So the, the, the type of contraception you give depends on the particular need of, of, the of, of, of that person. person. Now, for young people, now then there is barrier contraception that is not hormonal. The condoms, both male and female condoms, are also forms of contraceptives. Yes. Just, just, just that they are not as effective. Effect, the, the, the effectivity rate is, is not, um, it's not as high as some of those, of, of those hormonal um, contraceptions. So, it depends really on what you want to give. So for a young girl who intends to, of course, have a family later in future, but um, has come now and say she, she, she wants contraception, what we usually do is to offer them um, two types of contraception together. First, we tell them to use condoms. Condoms, in, in addition to preventing pregnancy, will prevent infection. Mm. So that is, why, that is why it's important to take, I'm just taking one case, just to give an example. So we tell the females, if you're going to um, continue having sex, please use a condom. It prevents you from getting um, pregnant, infection. at the same time, prevent infection. Yeah. But because we know that the, 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 in terms of conception, condom may not be so effective. We cannot say, okay, we are going to add one hormone, like, let's say, like a COC or a POP, to, in addition to the condom. condom. That's I'm talking about a young girl now. Yes, say, look, yeah. you use this. So when you, when you are now ready to get pregnant, you now stop. Another thing to consider is the reversal rate of the yeah. contraception. So you can stop a contraception now and, and it takes three months, eight months before you can so get back to fertility. Yeah, yeah. That is usually seen when you are using um, um, injectable um, contraception. Mm. The, uh, like the double provera. It, it takes three to eight months, sometimes a year, before you can get back to fertility. Mm. So imagine a woman that just wants a short for let's say I want to stay, I, I want to stay for like a year without contraception, without pregnancy, and I want to get pregnant immediately, I stop it. That would not be an Applicable, ideal contraception. Yes. So depending on the need, the medical condition, and the patient in totality, you determine which one is best for them. Well, Dr. Dima, thank you so much thank for you your so time much, today. Thank I know you. we have drilled you and we have, you know, we have thoroughly um, enjoyed every single thing that you have told us today. I'm sure the viewers, they have learned one or two things in what you have said. And we just want to say um, thank you very much for your time today. Um, we will definitely be calling you back because we need more of this. Um, so on this slide, I'm just going to check just if we have any more thing because I think there's something more coming in. Um, yes. <laughs> okay. So talking about the contraception now, just this last question. Okay. Hoping. Is there a particular contraception that has been developed for black women or works better for black women? 
<laughs> well, no. Okay. No, there is no um, contraception that has race as a consideration. Find each individual, mm. either white, black, Hispanic, which would be assessed as to what is best for that person. And I do not think race is a consideration. However, that said, when it comes to Africa, um, and we want to begin to bring in African culture, um, we now begin to consider some certain things, which I don't think we should be, we should be putting more emphasis on. Mm. But to answer the question straightforward, to, to answer the question as it has been asked, race is not a consideration for contraception. Okay. The same contraceptive that we use in Africa, use in Nigeria, is what is being used in the UK, okay. depending on the condition and medical need of the patient asking. Okay. So I'm going to, we are going to be rounding up. I know there's still more questions coming up. But we are mindful of time. Um, I'm going to take this, this last one. And it says, are there medications available to increase the libido for a woman? If yeah. yes, can it be prescribed by a GP? Well, okay. So we want to be able to satisfy our husbands. So <laughs> can, there, can we, for women that are struggling and that have found themselves struggling, you know, to meet up with the demands of their husband, can there be a, a medication to help them? Well, there, there is, to answer that question straightforward, to be, there is, there are medications that you can take that can increase your libido. They, basically, they are androgen-containing med, um, uh, medications. Whether the GP can prescribe, I don't think the NHS covers that, covers that because the way NHS is built, it's um, things that have to do with your life and all that. So yeah. I, I would have to check if the NHS will cover for such. But mm. from what I know, I don't think the NHS will. Okay. I don't think so, yeah. Okay. But again, I would, I'm not so clear about that. I can find, I can find out from, okay. from colleagues. Thank you so much, Doctor. Like I said, um, we've thoroughly enjoyed ourselves. Um, we've learned me. one or two things. And you've really, really gone into this topic. And personally, I'm happy. And I want to say thank you for coming. Thank we hope you. to be inviting you soon ah, again thank <laughs> you. to discuss more <laughs> topic. So um, on this note, um, we thank everyone that has joined us on different platform. We're going to be rounding up now. Thank you so much for your time. We hope you, we've been able to um, answer your questions. And if there's still more questions that you want us to, that you want to ask, Please feel free to send your questions in. We can always get Dr. Edima any time to answer these questions. Um, thank you for your time and have a good evening all. Thank you.